So I'm just this coming back for a few Okay, before we begin properly. Just want to remind everyone here that phone should be on silent or turned off. Because we are going to be streaming live. We don't want to hear the phone ringing. <laughs> and then if anyone needs to use the restroom, not for sleeping purposes now, <laughs> or just in case you want to rest, it is the SOA right? restroom on the ground floor is what you will be using for those who feel the need to rest. Okay. Yes. Okay, so we are live, I believe. So I want everyone to tune their attention to screen or up front on the screen. There you can see a program overview as to the exciting things you can expect. Okay. Yes, yes. Hello. Hello, hello. Yes, this is he. Oh, no, no, no. Sorry, sorry. Can't do that right now. I am in the middle. They said that they here and, a and they wanted me to do a launch for NASA, but unfortunately, I told them it's the wrong kind of a launch. It's the book launch, not a rocket launch. So I am sorry for the dis disturbance. Okay. Um, Afternoon, all. I extend hearty greetings to each and every one of you on behalf of the sincere appreciation for your presence here physically and those of you who are on participating. So, welcome to the Neville Hall Lecture Theater, affectionately simply called the N1, right? Lecture room, as we commence the virtual launch of the book Education for Sustainable Development in the Caribbean Pedagogy, Processes, and Practices. I am Miguel Eisen, your chairman for this event. I would especially like to welcome the following persons um, who have connections to UWE Mona. Those persons would be Dr. Stanley Griffin, Deputy Dean of Undergraduate Studies Faculty. And then I also want to extend a welcome to Dr. Marcia Rainford, Director, School of Education. Then we have Dr. Carol Hardat Gentles, our keynote speaker. 
you'll be hearing from these persons a bit later on. I also would like to acknowledge the presence of Ms. Nadine Buckland, who is the acting general manager of the UWI Press. Then online, I think we have Ms. Chrisan Pinnock, who is a 2021 graduate, the MED degree program for sustainable development and global citizenship and peace. And we also have reps from the library, Yui Mona National Library, Jamaica Library Service. Additionally, I want to thank physically, Dr. Dawn, earlier I saw her online, not sure if she's still there, but I think she might still be online, Dr. Right, Dr. Lorna Dawn, welcome. I also want to extend um, a special welcome to my SOE colleagues and friends and families and well-wishers of the authors. In particular, here in the audience with me, we see Alicia Dawn, who's a sister of Lorna, welcome. And Alicia's husband, Michael, right? Welcome, Michael and Alicia. I want to say to you that this afternoon you are in store for a wonderful trip, not a rocket trip, but for a wonderful trip as we take a taste from the book, Education for Sustainable Development in the Caribbean, Pedagogies, Processes and Practices. And you want this evening to have the chance, you are the first person to hear the contents of that book. So there'll be a special reading, right, of some excerpts from it. And then you'll also have a presentation on a keynote by Dr. Gentles, and you all get a chance to hear from one of the authors who is online physically. I think Dr. Down may do her piece as well from online, but we'll see what happens there. So I want to welcome you and trust that you are going to have a wonderful time as you journey with us in the launch of this timely text. Let us seek on lesson as we bring the program to official start. Father God, we give you thanks because we know that all good things come from you. So we pray, God, for this evening's, for this afternoon's function, God, that the online live stream, that the flow of events, God, will be well. We pray that all the technical things will be looked after. And we pray that those who are online listening, they will participate and will feel like if they are with us in this room itself. We give you thanks, Lord, for the for the knowledge, the insight, the wisdom given to the authors to, to uh, produce this, this wonderful text. We pray, Father God, that many persons will go out and buy a copy so that we will see transformation in the education landscape that will be educating people in ways that will be sustainable. We just ask you to cover the entire proceedings, Father, even now. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. All right, so like every good meal, we have some appetizers. And first up, appetizer, bring that post to us. We have Dr. Um, Dr. Griffin. So Dr. Stanley H. Griffin is a deputy dean of undergraduate matters and senior lecturer in archival information studies in the Faculty of Humanities and Education, the Department of Library and Information Studies respectively at the University of West Indies, Mona Campus, Jamaica. Stanley's research interests include multiculturalism in Antigua and the Eastern Caribbean, the cultural dynamics of intra-Caribbean migrations, archives in the construct of Caribbean culture and community archives in the Caribbean. His most recent publication include Archiving Caribbean Identity, Records, Community and Memory, 2022. Very, very fresh. <laughs> and decolonizing Caribbean records, an archive reader 2018, works co-edited with Jeanette Bastian and John Aarons. And besides, he has several other book chapters and articles in Caribbean journals on archival and cultural issues. Ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together please and welcome Dr. Stanley H. Griffin. Thank you very much, Chair. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, authors, and of the Department of Director of the School of Education and colleagues, it is a privilege to have this opportunity to represent our Dean of the Faculty of Humanities and Education, Professor Sylvia Cohenberg, colleagues and students in celebrating 
the launch of this new work and to commend the accomplishments of our colleagues, Dr. Lorna Down and Deputy Dean Therese Ferguson. No doubt we are very proud of your efforts and we applaud this text, especially for the next three reasons. Firstly, we celebrate this text because it adds to the almost 75 year old academic tradition of our University of the West Indies by centering its analysis and discourse on the needs of our region. The 1945 report of the West Indies Committee of the Royal Commission on Higher Education in the Colonies, properly known as the Irving Report, which recommended the establishment of our university, dedicated an entire section to discussing the point that, and I quote, there was a need for, there was a need to develop a West Indian outlook. That is, bringing our Caribbean perspectives to the issues and concerns that plague our world, those challenges that are articulated and expressed in ways peculiar to our regional sociocultural and environmental context. This text narrows down the considerations and application of education for sustainable development to our Caribbean reality and the ways in which we can so construct our pedagogy, policy, and practice to effectively build sustainability in our societies. Secondly, we celebrate the scholarly contribution of our colleagues, Drs. Dowd and Ferguson, to our, university, to our university community, and in particular, to those in the education and policy sectors that will benefit from this research directly. When I reflect on academic success in our university context, it's not necessarily measured in wealth or income generation, but in the ways in which our academic scholarship pragmatic, pragmatically impacts our Caribbean community and our various disciplinary practices. Dr. Down and Dr. Ferguson, your work is going to inspire our Caribbean community and our various education and policy sectors. So we thank you for your commitment, diligence, and perseverance, as I'm certain you worked on this project during the pandemic. We appreciate your contribution to teaching and learning in our university and in particular our faculty. Finally, we celebrate the publication of this book because it is interesting and intriguing I thank Dr. Ferguson for sharing the introduction with me, um, which allowed me to you know, get a full up understanding of ESD, which is <laughs> Education in Sustainable Development and its interconnection with the UN Sustainable Goals. And I learned a lot from that introduction. Imagine if you read the entire book. We have no doubt that this text will influence pedagogy processes and practices in cementing education for sustainable development in our Caribbean context and deepening our societal efforts to make our region and our world a better place. Again, on behalf of Dean Cohenberg, fellow colleagues and students in our Faculty of Humanities and Education, we offer our warmest congratulations on this work and our hope that this publication will further our efforts in promoting a sustainable future for our Caribbean. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much, Deputy Dean, for those greetings. And we continue with greetings. Next up, we have greetings from Dr. Marcia Rainford, who is the Director, School of Education, and she's been serving in that capacity since 2019. She's also a Senior Lecturer in Science Education at the UWI Bona. She is a pragmatic, dedicated, and caring science teacher education, educator with a passion for teaching and an avid advocate for student-centered instruction. Her career spans 40 years, call it young looks, 40 years, can't believe it. <laughs> and she is an avid advocate, as I was saying before, for student-centered instruction. Her career, 40 years in the field of education, and she holds a PhD in science education from UWI Mona. Her research publications have been concerned with areas of teaching and learning and assessment in science and teacher professional development 
She has sought to enhance teaching through assessment for learning, AFL, and continuous collaborative professional development of teachers. Her contribution is areas is from the Caribbean perspective, showcasing evidence from the field of practice at the secondary level. She's also attempted to provide guidance for the Caribbean teachers on how to implement the school-based assessment and how it fits into the AFL framework and the suitability for improving learning. Her work has also provided examples of the use of participatory action research in teacher professional development, thereby adding to the number of such studies in Jamaica and the Caribbean. Let's welcome please Dr. Senior Lecturer, 40 years experience. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, a special good afternoon to you all. Let me acknowledge Dr. Therese Ferguson, who is sitting over there looking calm and smiling at me. And I believe Dr. Dawn is online. Um, Lorna, we miss you seeing you here, but I'm happy that you're, you have joined us. Um, family members, Dr. Horda Gentles, Dr. Stanley Griffin, um, Mr. Miguel Eisen, and others. It is truly a pleasure to be here this afternoon. Um, as I consider this opportunity, one that I really couldn't miss. And I want to congratulate Therese and Lorna, my colleagues, on this publication promoting and sustaining effective practice in schools, post in service, professional development, context, culture, matter. Now, I don't know what you're feeling now, but I'm pretty sure that some of it is relief. But you should, you should also be feeling a very, very strong sense of satisfaction because this this bit of work is an important bit of work and I really want to commend you for having got here. And I want to commend you a press for taking the time, the, using this as a means to showcase the work of the School of Education. So it's a pleasure to be here. Now, looking at what the book um, represents, I think it's one of those publications that we in the School of Education will find very, very useful for our teaching. The data presented in the work supports what many educators come to know from just from experience that context and culture in schools really do matter. And so many graduates of our programs are unable to implement and sustain good practices learned during initial training because of the context in which they find themselves after, after training and the culture of their institutions. I was able to relate to much of what was represented there, even as I reflected on my own experience. I was fortunate to land in an institution that supported teachers and facilitated initiative and independent actions that served for you know, their own growth and development. And I think that, that this, this piece of research fills an important gap in teacher professional development literature in the Caribbean as well, there is much research on the practices of beginning teachers as they transition from training programs to working in schools. The research on teacher professional development in the Caribbean viewed through the lens of sustainability is new. This is significant as this study provides empirical data on the impact of a teacher preparation program on graduates transfer of knowledge gained from the program years after completion. The research therefore challenged me as a researcher director to reflect on how our programs serve to prepare students for various contexts and to contemplate more carefully how we continue our work 
in teacher professional development beyond the school of education and seek ways for strengthening their work with schools. As such, the findings from this study should provide valuable information for planning and implementing initial and ongoing teacher professional development programs in the Caribbean. I think that teacher educators will find the reflections and the questions from this book very, very useful. I can easily see how this resource can be incorporated, as I said, into our courses in the School of Education. And I believe that this work will benefit not just teacher educators, but researchers engaged in qualitative research and in particular case studies, trainee teachers, school leaders interested in transforming school culture. I want to thank you for turning your scholarship to producing this relevant bit of research on teacher professional development, which will one day, which, which, which certainly is one of the core functions of the school from which we can all benefit. I want to congratulate you on the publication and then I encourage you to continue to write and write and write more. Bless you. Thank you so much, young lady, for the greeting. Yeah, I like to trouble her, you know. Okay, next at this point in time, we continue with greetings. And this time we are going to invite Miss Nadine Buckland. It says Nadine D. Buckland, maybe dynamic, we will see. Is currently acting general manager of the UV Press with over 20 years in scholarship publishing. Recently, she was appointed to the Council of the Association of Learned Professional Society Publishers UK and served on numerous committees and associations of the University Press, Presses USA and was treasurer and board of director from 2017 to 2019 of that association. Mrs. Buckland is a graduate of the Michael Teachers College and of the University of West Indies and the University of Leicestershire in the UK. Let us please welcome Ms. Buckland Yeah. Thank you very much, um, Master of Ceremonies. And thank you, uh, Pro Vice Chancellor. I'm not sure if there are any uh, uh, sitting in the audience, uh, the authors and um, participants in the program today, uh, colleagues from the university community and beyond. Ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. It is my distinct pleasure to bring greetings on behalf of the Vice Chancellor, Sir Hilary Beckles, the UWI Press Board of Directors, its chair, Professor Denzel Williams, and as publisher of this very important work, Education for Sustainable Development in the Caribbean, Pedagogy, Processes, and Practices. The authors of this book, have crafted a volume directed to more than just teachers. I think it's a much broader audience. ESD is an interdisciplinary theme that is relevant to teachers, researchers, policymakers, and curriculum developers. Dr. Down and Ferguson have highlighted that to fully integrate ESD, and I'm focusing on we, we need to do a couple of things. One, explore the context of sustainability in relation to development. 
That is looking at the context of a post COVID-19 environment, its related technical, social, health and wellness needs from various angles. It talks about a systematic, um, I think the word that I'm looking for is systematized content. Uh, and this is where publishers, libraries, designers, videographers, IT specialists, resource platforms come in. Three, develop connections. Connecting the various two points as and community, communities and acting for its preservation and well-being. To this end, we want to highlight that publishing is both an art and a science. As with science, we systematically organize the manuscripts submitted through various processes and artfully present the work in a form that reflects the invaluable content and artistic expression of designers that appeal to readers in the global marketplace. In a global context, the university presses are the center of knowledge ecosystem. That ecosystem demands that education for sustainable development becomes a critical element in the pedagogy, processes, practices of our education system. Dr. Down and Ferguson begin by presenting small island development states in the sustainability conceptual framework. How do we understand this development in the context of a globalizing world will depend on how we understand the process of economic, economic, political, and cultural spheres in highly contradictory and irregular ways and cannot be seen as a predictable process. Sometimes we are actually surprised by the outcomes achieved. There needs to be caution about the histories of education and development used to bolster development policy rationales of national programs and international development in communities. How does the UWI Press contribute to ESG? The UWI Press is a member of the UN SDG, just mentioned for um, publishers, and that is our role in ensuring that education for sustainability includes the following. One, expand the readership of publishing in formats from print to ebook to audio to online and by making all of these publications accessible. In the upcoming year, we are looking at accessible formats, accessible alternative formats for those print related disabilities. Expanding cultural expression by publishing original works of fiction, poetry, creative, nonfiction, and visual arts and integrating them in the curriculum to ensure ESD. My third point, we're rediscovering and maintaining the availability of works important to scholarship and culture through reprint programs and through the revival of key backlist titles often used on an open digital edition. So I think I will end here by congratulating the authors who were very charming to work with. Um, I, I think as publishers, we sometimes say, okay, we'll pick that one <laughs> because they know how to market the book and promote the book and they present the work in the way that we want it. Just dream, they both work. So on behalf of our placing the spotlight on ESD and for urging us to act. Congratulations again and thank you for choosing the UWI Press. Okay. And at this point in time, we are going to.
hear a little bit from the star of the show. Yeah, making sure you can see the star of the show is, unless you think it's me. Um, and you're going to hear some excerpts being read to us from Ms. Kristan Pinnock, Kristan of the MA degree in Education for Sustainable Development, Global Citizenship and Peace. She is with us virtually. So Ms. Pinnock, hope you can hear us. You need to see your face. So in the meantime, let's start, keep on. Please get your copies, right? I'm going to remind you a little bit how you can get yours. Ms. Pinnock, see if she is ready. Thank you and good afternoon to Mr. Miguel Ison, the Master of Ceremony, the authors, Dr. Lorna Doan and Dr. Therese Ferguson and other participants, ladies and gentlemen in the audience, a pleasant afternoon to you all. It is my distinct pleasure to share with you this afternoon two personal climate change perspectives of Caribbean nationals. The authors of the book wish to underscore the realities of climate change, and so they solicited and shared stories about the personal impact of this phenomenon. Please note that pseudonyms were used to protect the identity of the sources. The first story is titled The Great Flood from Grace of Guyana. The Great Flood. That's how many in Guyana describe the flood of 2005. The heavy rains started on Christmas Eve, December 2004, and continued until mid-January. It was the first time we had ever experienced anything like it. There was no early warning. On the east coast of the Demerara, we live in a basin, and so it made it particularly difficult for us. Because of our geography, we had no way of getting the water out consistently. We are below sea level, so generally for us to drain, we have to wait for low tide and that delayed the process of draining the water. So many factors caused it to have a tremendous impact on us. Many people had to move out of their homes. My mom and dad had to come up by me in Burbis because where I live was a little bit higher, so it wasn't as flooded. They had to pack up everything, even the dogs. The entire bottom level of the house was flooded. For my parents, we moved everything in their home from downstairs and brought that upstairs. It definitely had a psychological effect on my mom. Even today when it rains for long periods, she begins to worry. She often wonders, will the same situation reoccur? The second story is titled, Where Did the Beach Go? from Anne of Barbados. I love the beach and I would frequent that area every other day. This all changed when the seaweed started piling up on our beaches around 2018 onwards. When you look at the beach, it was almost like you were seeing mountains of seaweed. One could not even see the sand anymore just a whole pile of seaweed. Even when it was cleaned up, it just kept coming back. This amount of seaweed was quite unnatural. Never had we seen so much seaweed turn up on our beaches. It was very bad. We couldn't go to the beach, walk along the sand or bathe in the water. It made me quite sad that I couldn't see the beach anymore. And this was a reminder that something serious was happening to our earth. It was a warning that something bigger was happening. I was able to understand the background. I knew how the warming of the seawaters was impacting this. The knowledge of that felt like a burden and it made me sad to see what was happening. Some in the community were confused about why they could not frequent the beaches anymore. And the persons were quite offended by the smell. There was also an impact on tourism as some visitors to our island were not able to visit the beaches while here. Thank you very much. Have a great evening.
Okay, thank you very much. Um, if you want to know where you can get a copy of the book, you know, it's, you know, bread when it's freshly baked, should get it while it's hot, right? We know that. Um, fritters the same way too as well, aka flitters, yeah? Get it while it is hot. So to be one of the first persons to get the book, there is a promotion code. Um, it is 03ESD22. So 03ESD22. And the site you can go to access that is www.uepress.com or through Longleaf Customer Service at longleafservice.org. And the information is on the screen. If you do that using the promo code, you get 35% off. This promotion is valid just for today, this discount. Oh, through June 12th, right? Just want to ensure, please, that you, ensure, you make sure you get yours. You have roughly one month. We are giving you enough time for the next month then to come around, right? <laughs> and you can also budget so that you know that you can afford this book. This will be a game changer in the landscape of education. Teachers, students, get your copy, right? You can be able to address issues of climate change that is happening, issues of poverty and peace and social justice, really important work. So at this point in time, let us now get ready to hear from our keynote speaker. She is, like all keynotes, very well qualified. <laughs> she is Dr. Harda Gentles, and she holds a PhD in curriculum. Curriculum teaching and learning and in teacher education from the Ontario Institute of Educational Studies. I think we normally call it OIZ, the University of Toronto. She has a master's degree in educational psychology, a diploma in education specializing in geography and social studies from UWI Mona. She also holds a BA in psychology from the York University, Toronto, Canada. Dr. Gentles is a teacher education and teacher development specialist. In this capacity, she has worked as a consultant with USAID, USAID, the World Bank, UNESCO, and the Ministry of Education, Grenada, on various projects across the Caribbean. She has also served on local, national, and international boards, including the University Council of Jamaica, the Advisory Board of Undergraduate Studies at the University of Technology, and Grace Kennedy Foundation Board. She is currently the immediate past chairperson of the International Council on Education for Teaching, called ISET, and chairperson of the Joint Board of Teacher Education, MONA. Her responsibilities in the School of Education include serving as editor of the Caribbean Journal of Education and program coordinator for the MA in teacher education and teacher development. Ladies and gentlemen, in, in the house and online, let's please welcome Dr. Harder Jenkins. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, I have to admit, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> See, I, this is what I was going to say that this is actually the first time that I have done any sort of address physically since the beginning of COVID. So I'm not nervous about giving the, the, the address. I'm really nervous about how am I gonna man manipulate the mic, the paper, looking at you. <laughs> so forgive me if I start dropping things, okay? All right. Yes, thanks. <laughs> and then I'm going to say, as we've learned in COVID, are you hearing me? <laughs> Wonderful. Okay, that makes me feel a little bit, you know, like I'm used to. Okay, so good afternoon, everyone. Um, when I was asked to give this keynote, I felt honored that Lorna and Therese trusted me enough to do a review of their book, Education for Sustainable Development in the Caribbean, pedagogy, processes, and practices. This is because while I have been engaged from the periphery with ESD work since 2006, 
when Lorna insisted in pulling me into the fledgling ESD community, I must admit I have never felt sure that I truly understood what ESD was all about. This is because ESD as a concept was never set out didactically, nor was it meant to be prescriptive. Instead, over the years, since the start of the decade for education for sustainable development in 2005, much work has been done across the globe to create, develop, plan, design, implement, deliver, document, refine, research, and theorize the nature and practice of ESD in local and global contexts. But now, having read and reviewed this book, I finally feel I have wrapped my head around the concept. This is because the book is detailed, clear, comprehensive, and beautifully written. It touches the right notes in the right places, offering the right amount of theory, accounts of experience, and guidance for pedagogy and practice. The book is organized into seven chapters, which provide an excellent overview of the ESD landscape, as well as an invitation to take a deep dive into the conceptual complexities, issues, and challenges of ESD. The first chapter explores sustainable development, and it explains what we need to know and learn about ourselves and others to construct a sustainable development worldview. Concepts like community, interconnectedness between people and the natural environment, and the interconnectedness of the historical, global, economic, and local context of the lives of Caribbean peoples, their identity, their selves, and the future development of our region and planet are explored. Discussion of these is used to frame and situate a core premise of the book, as stated by Down and Ferguson on page nine, and I quote, Social justice and equity are clearly fundamental to the creation of a sustainable society, as the discourse on development in the Caribbean emphasizes. They are core to all dimensions of sustainability and may also be conceptualized in terms of peace, care, and respect for the entire community of life. The notion is developed further as the authors reject the view that economic growth is what is needed the most to move development forward. They suggest instead that what we need first for societies to thrive is transformation at the level of core values. To quote further, they argue, it is by holding to these values that people will come to the understanding that peace is linked to justice, that care and respect for self and others mean equal rights for all. It is at this point we can truly imagine the possibilities for society-wide transformation geared towards equity, innovation, and stewardship of the planet. The authors conclude that this is where education comes in. It must be reoriented to teach students and teachers at all levels of the system to be ready and willing to promote sustainability. The emphasis on the importance of teaching values in the Caribbean context continues in chapter two. Readers are introduced to UNESCO's values that underpin sustainability and the 16 principles of the Earth Charter. They recommend that this must be a core element of our curriculum. Chapter three identifies the geographic and socioeconomic vulnerabilities of island and mainland Caribbean countries and the key issues we should all be aware of such as climate change, disaster risk, disaster risk management, peace education, crime and violence, and global citizenship. The challenges these create point to the significance of ensuring that Caribbean teacher education plays a key role in engendering sustainability awareness, skills, competences, values, and practices in our teacher trainees. And the status of teacher education and its contribution to promoting ESD in our region is discussed in chapter four. And these are followed by chapters five, six, and seven, where 
there's an offer of knowledge and guidance for understanding the pedagogy processes and practices of ESD in the Caribbean. To accomplish this, the authors educate us further. They speak to important strategies such as vision building, infusion of ESD into subjects and disciplines, community action projects, curation of content and teaching core competencies. They also make an important case for revisioning assessment to include, for example, action-based community projects where we evaluate critical self-inquiry and reflection as a primary concern. The final chapter shares the findings of a study they conducted to determine six UE lecturers' understanding of sustainable development and ESD and if and how these uh, lecturers practice ESD. It further shares case studies, exemplars of ESD work done over the years in Jamaica and the region. And for those of you who don't know, these are several, but they include the development and delivery of two graduate level courses that are taught in the School of Education, a pioneer master's program in ESD, the Change From Within program, and the ESD Teacher Educator Network that has facilitated research, advocacy, public outreach, and capacity building over the years. So taken together, the seven chapters, their content and discussions already make a significant contribution to the body of ESD literature, both globally and certainly regionally. It is, as is explained on the back, worthy accomplishment. But as I will argue, the book makes important contributions on other levels too. First, it is clear from beginning to end that this book is infused with the passion and commitment that is needed to drive ESD the way it needs to be. As Lorna and Therese, the author, state in the first line of the book, the writing of this text represents our belief in our moral purpose and commitment to promoting a transformative education that can move our country, our region and the world towards an ethic of care for the planet, each other and ourselves. And this is indeed what they set out to do with this book. They advocate for ESD with the firm unwavering conviction that it holds a key to the type of transformed world they long to see. They also, I think to me more importantly, model the core values of care and respect in their style of writing and the carefully curated choices of exemplars that they share with us. They talk too of the critical need for Caribbean people to value self and their own identity. On page 13, they explain, when schools in post-colonial societies emphasize the development of agency, resilience, and capability, they are in effect addressing many of the inequalities that exist as a result of that historical context. More so, they are engendering in their students that sense of belonging to place, that necessary lack of caring for place and others. The authors, I think I made a mistake, there, but sorry, the authors urge us to be committed to educate others to develop notions of self-help, agency, and resilience. This they explain is emphasized in a recent UNDP report that says people should ultimately be agents of their individual and collective destiny able to drive social change. By writing this book, Lorna and Therese are modeling what it means to commit to being agents of social change. The book, with its focus on the Caribbean, exemplifies true, deep, unapologetic scholarship and confidence in their Caribbean selves. It is a book written about a global concept as it plays out in a local Caribbean context. What is most remarkable to me is what this book represents. And this is because I know the two of them well. The culmination of years of thoughtful, reflective, passionate work of two unassuming, gentle yet strong Caribbean women. Those of us who know them know they're not shrinking violets, but we know they have worked as educators and project facilitators. 
They've produced numerous top quality papers, chapters, and books about ESD, Lorna especially since the very early beginnings of, of the ESD movement. Thus, this book is grounded in their own work. This is very significant. So their voice, their Caribbean voice can be strong and confident, enabling them to write with authority and expertise. This accomplishment commands the utmost respect and pride from those of us Caribbean academics who are looking for role models, particularly female role models, to reassure us that we can be theorists and scholars capable of constructing our own culturally relevant theoretical discourses while also contributing to global conversations. Another way in which ESD is modeled is through the author's clear commitment to referencing throughout the book, the work of many Caribbean writers as well as the stories of teachers and students. And we heard two um, exemplars just now from Chrisanne. This choice to do this demonstrates their belief in self-affirmation of self being realized in community. As the reader journeys through the chapters of the book, they encounter Caribbean poets, scholars, novelists, film producers, academics, students, teachers, whose words and shared experiences add depth and interest. We meet Olive Senior, who Lorna and Therese consider one of the Caribbean's finest poets, as she bemoans tensions between the development of large all-inclusive resorts at the expense of losing natural coastal habitats. We hear about Esther Figaro's film, Fly Me to the Moon. We meet Mervyn Morris, another um, stalwart uh, Jamaican poet. We hear real experiences of the impact of climate change from three Guyanese citizens. The inclusion of these members of our community celebrates that which is Caribbean and inspires us to have faith in possibilities for sustainable transformation. Lorna and Therese, I offer my heartiest congratulations on the publication and launch of what is clearly a very significant book for Jamaica and the Caribbean region, and it will take its place internationally as well. Its launch today is timely as we recognize with growing alarm that there can be no denying that climate change is real. It's in our face. We hear it every day on the news. There's no denying that our planet and humanity is in peril. And so it is imperative that we all understand we must be involved in working to make our society sustainable. In the book, Lorna and Perez, you speak of all the challenges our world is facing, the ravages of a pandemic, devastation due to war. You remind us that crime and violence, rises in sea level, improper waste management, deforestation are right at our doorstep. So you also motivate us to think deeply about how we may be complicit in perpetuating these issues if we do not become involved in practicing and educating for sustainability. This is a critical consideration, particularly as it appears, despite all the work that has been done in the Caribbean over the, uh, I would say last 15 years, 20 years, it appears we're still far from mainstreaming ESD into the Jamaican school system. I have to say, I'm, very per I'm personally very disappointed that the new reform of education in Jamaica report 2022 makes absolutely no reference to ESD or any of the sustainability principles. This is a serious omission. Thus, I thus envisage your book being useful for those of us who want to challenge this serious and very worrisome omission. For example, your recommendations in the closing pages of your book urge for continuing and sustained efforts to reorient education to include teacher education as we think about sustainability, to use a whole institution approach as we think about sustainability. You teach us in your book that we need a paradigm shift that engenders a critical change from traditional to learner-centered teaching, learning and assessment that aligns with sustainability. You insist that values clarification is vital and that we must emphasize teaching about climate change and peace education. Yet none of these will be realized if all of us do not join with you in advocating for ESD to be recognized by our own governments and policymakers. 
What your book does is make knowledge of and justification for ESD in the Caribbean accessible to all our readers in one small but powerful volume. Therefore, it's truly significant. So in closing, I'm going to join Mr. Eisen in inviting everyone to acquire this book, Education for Sustainable Development in the Caribbean Pedagogy, Processes and Practices. It is an excellent read which should be on your bookshelf. Dr. Lorna Down, Dr. Fer Therese Ferguson, congratulations again, and thank you for inviting me to be part of this. Thanks. Okay, I have to keep taking my glasses off so I can read. Yeah, I can see you. With on. But to see closer, you need to come off. So yes, right. That is all right. So I want to summarize what the keynote speaker just said in a Jamaican phrase: "It little but it talawa." Yeah, that is the book. So please, if you haven't received your copy as yet, do so now. We call it subliminal messages. We're not trying to be too obvious. We, we, you know, <laughs> we've been very discreet and very subtle. So I, I'm not going to emphasize and say the star of the show, you know, I'm not going to do any of that, right? Because I don't want to draw undue attention to the book. You know, I'm really trying to do it subtle, subliminal. So in order to qualify for a 35% discount, you need a promotion code, right? 03 ESD. 22. So the ESD, we know where that comes from. And the 22, we can guess where that comes from. Zero three. Who knows where that part comes from? <laughs> but anyway, we need you to make sure you copy this code. Take a screenshot, whatever it is. Don't lose this. Um, this will be the game changer. You'll be talking about it on the way to buy groceries at the supermarket, right? While they are protesting and the lack of water and so on. Please get, get your copy. And they say, we want justice. Really, in here, please get your copy. Don't be left out and wondering what is all this excitement about, right? You were some of the first set to hear the book launch, to see it launch, get your copy as you're going out. Um, and it's online. So we accept credit cards and all of those kinds of things online, right? You don't have to have cash on, you know. Just please ensure that before you leave here, you do that. So enough from me, you need to hear from the creators of this masterpiece. And um, Dr. Down is online. Dr. Therese Ferguson is in house. So let me just tell you who those two ladies are a little bit. So Dr. Lorna Down, she is a former senior lecturer at the School of Education, UWE Mona here in Jamaica. And she has published internationally as well as regionally in ESD and teacher education and literature. Her publications include the co-edited book, Caribbean Writers on Teaching Literature. Then we have Dr. Therese Ferguson, who is also a senior lecturer, School of Education for Sustainable Development, ESD, in the School of Education. Here at UWE Mona, she is published regionally and internationally as well in areas of ESD, climate change education, and peace education. Amongst her publication is a co-authored book, SDG4, Quality Education, Inclusivity, Equity, Lifelong and Lifelong Learning for All. So ladies and gentlemen, let's put our hands together as we welcome to hear from the author, Therese Ferguson. Little louder, little louder, I can barely hear it. Ooh. Yes, 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 yes. Good afternoon, everyone. I am bringing this message on behalf of my co-author, Dr. Lorna Down, who does extend her apologies as she was unable to be here physically with us today. But of course, she is joining online and on behalf of myself. So we're starting off with a quote from our, our text, which Dr. Horda Gentles actually shared. The writing of this text 
represents our belief in our own moral purpose and commitment to promoting a transformative education that can move our country, region, and world towards an ethic of care for the planet, each other, and ourselves. This could not have been accomplished without the support and encouragement of various individuals. We believe that every achievement emerges from, by, and through community and is inspired by God. We acknowledge and give thanks for our community of colleagues and friends, especially those at the University of the West Indies, in particular, the School of Education, as well as the Michael University College. We are especially grateful for the members of the Education for Sustainable Development, the ESD Working Group, both past and present in the School of Education at the University of the West Indies, whose work in ESD has helped to inform this text. And we think it important to name these individuals. Sharon Bramwell Laylor, Lorraine Cook, Everton Cummings, Valitha Davis Morrison, Carol Hordat Gentles, Diane McCallum, Carmel Roof, Aldrin Sweeney, Knut Thompson, Clavia Williams McBean, and Marceline Collins Figueroa. Additionally, we thank Charles Hopkins and Rosalind McEwen, whose significant contribution to Education for Sustainable Development in Teacher Education in Jamaica helped to lay the foundation for this text. We thank our research assistant, Ms. Tanisha Gordon, who assisted with the various phases of this research. The research participants across the Caribbean region who shared freely about their educational beliefs and practices and their personal climate change narratives. You heard two of those earlier. Ms. Thelma Baker, whose insightful comments and careful reading of the manuscript added much to the quality of the text. In addition, we would like to thank our publishers, the University of the West Indies Press, for their critical support throughout all stages of the manuscript development and production processes. We are most grateful for the encouragement and support of our family, notably Mervyn and Keisha Ann Down, Alicia Dunn, Lauren Murray, Yvonne Ferguson, and Tyrone Ferguson. We end by expressing our appreciation to those who contributed to this launch event. These include those with roles on the program, Mr. Miguel Eisen, Dr. Stanley Griffin, Dr. Marcia Rainford, Ms. Nadine Buckland, Dr. Carol Hordad Gentles, Ms. Chris Ann Pinnock. They also include those who contributed to the organization of the event, as well as the smooth running of the event today. Ms. Nadine Brown, thank you so much. Mrs. Kelly Williams Gardner, Mrs. Karen Smith, Ms. Aginelle Solomon, Mr. Sheldon Garwood, Mrs. Jacqueline Powell Bell, Ms. Nadine Davis, Ms. Althea Akins, and those who contributed to the initial and final designs of the promotional material, Ms. Desan Watson and Ms. Lisa Moses. And of course, other persons who have contributed in countless other ways to this book and to this event. And of course, we end by saying that we are most grateful for all of you who have attended today, both those of you present physically in the room, as well as those online. Your presence is deeply appreciated. We give thanks. <laughs> Subliminal messaging. So at this point in time, we have been talking about this textbook, Education for Sustainable Development in the Caribbean, Pedagogy, Processes and Practices, 
you need to have it on your bookshelves. So we are going to call back Ferris Ferguson and she is going to come and do a couple of presentations. Well, it's not a couple, it's two, so it's a triple, right? <laughs> she will present some books to libraries. So she's presenting to the UE Mona Library. Um, looking for the person who is the rep here for that. She's also presenting to the National Library of Jamaica, right? And then she is presenting to the Jamaica Library Services. So first of all, to the UE Mona Library, who is receiving on behalf, I'm looking for the paper, but like Dr. General said, there are so many bits of papers, right? So they just get a young lady who is in charge. Merci beaucoup. So from the UE Library, we have Miss Virgie Lee Reed Lawson, and she's yeah gonna hear receive on behalf of the UE Library. Hold on. Yes, come this side. So the people who are at home will be left out. Next, we are going to call on Ms. Chantel Richardson, who is the Acting Manager of Jamaica Libraries and Information Network, Jamin, to receive on behalf of Mr. Keisha Myers for the National Library of Jamaica. Ms. Chantel Richardson, please. Let's welcome her. Come a little bit on the side, yes. Keep it on, keep it on, let me see you. Uh, there she is again, Fort Hall, Miss Chantel Richardson, receiving on behalf of Jamie, Jamaica Libraries Information Network. Okay. And also, Miss Maureen Thompson, she's in house. Oh, okay. And receive on behalf of Jamaica Library Services. Trying to get a book out into the different libraries. So here comes Ms. Marie Thompson. <laughs> yes, Marie Thompson. Dion Barnett. Dion Barnett. Oh, Dion Barnett. Okay, Dion Barnett receiving from Marie Thompson. So now that we have given out some copies of the books to three sets of libraries, I'm asking you, do you have your copy? The audience in here, do you have your copy? The audience online, right? Remember, we're not leaving you out now to access your copy for a 35% discount. You know, in this day and age when everything has gone up, right? Gas gone up weeks upon weeks, cost of food, everything's going up. Here is a discount. ESD, yeah? <laughs> Sustainable, but only for one month. <laughs> After that, we will not sustain this low, low price. So please do not put it down and forget, do it tonight. In fact, do it right now, I'm giving you a couple of seconds. Log in right, right now to www.uepress.com. Or you can go to Longleaf Customer Service at longleafservice.org and order yours, promo code 03. ESD 22, 35% discount, can't believe it, cannot. At this price, it might run out. Get yours, get yours soon. Just being very, very subtle, not making it too obvious, yeah? You're right. So I would like to thank you all for coming here. I, I was told this would last two hours, you know, and I, you know, I'm sad, but that's okay. We will have fellowship outside. <laughs> 
Right. And um, I want to thank you all for coming. Those of you who are here online, thank you for your presence. Thank you for staying with us. Those of you who are in the room, good to see faces. It's my first face-to-face -face something in quite a long time, yeah? Haven't been face-to-face -face for a long time. I'm so used to online now that face-to-face -face is a readjustment. <laughs> um, so thanks to everyone who has come out. You know yourselves by name. I don't want to go through again all the protocols. We were greeted earlier. Um, on behalf of the authors, want to thank you. Those who spoke, the keynote, right? Those who brought greetings. Um, Kristan, who did a reading for us, the excerpts, all of the organizers, right? All the technical persons behind the scene, right? Hopefully next time around, we have this next book being launched. I'll be able to thank a makeup person, right? But for now, yeah, no such thanks. But again, good to have you here. Get your copies while it's hot, H-O-T-T. Yeah, blessings all, we're all good. Uh, right, oh, oh yes, yes, yes. For the people who are in house, refreshments provided for you next door. And those who are out of house, in your own homes, refreshments in your fridges, <laughs> don't enjoy at our expense, enjoy it. God bless, take care.